Great. Well, welcome. This is uh, the Xylem Group Fire Talk for Monday, April 24th, 2017. And we are engaged and have been at one of our last sessions in something called difficult situations. So if you can imagine yourself uh, in a meeting, and we particularly are talking about board meetings, those with uh, trustees, boards of directors, the decision makers of organizations that at the level of policy, that in those kind of meetings, uh, it's, it's difficult. Now, it could be either difficult at the level of um, how people are, are being with each other in the meeting or interacting with the discussion. It could be with regards to how the process of the meeting is going. It could also be difficult about the particular topic that's at hand. So today's fire talk discussion is broadening out to any of those uh, different situations. And um, I see that uh, there is a request for someone to join in and I'll engage with uh, Sherry Jennings, who is from Washington, one of our colleagues. Let's see, invite. Good morning, Sherry. Good morning, Linda. Ah, I'm not hearing you. Let's see whether. Hmm. Let me just check in with the chat field. Can others hear Sherry? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Ah, it's me. Okay, Sherry, say again. Can you hear me? Oh, absolutely. Loud and clear. Thank you and welcome. Thank you. Technology, it helps, it helps to turn your sound volume up. Ah. It's a good thing. Difficult situation, easily <laughs> solved by turning your volume up. All right. Well, welcome to uh, this, this morning, this afternoon's discussion. Um, and difficult situations, any, any part of that broad spectrum of difficult situations that you, you either have personal experience with or you have questions about, and we can certainly take input from those in the chat field. I need some help, <laughs> in fact. So, um, so let me just a little background. It's, it's a large board, it's 30 members. They meet only twice a year. Um, they are, they have an executive director and they are attempting to change their system of governance to reflect to that because prior to this they've been all volunteer where people on the board have been doing all the administrative work and all, all of the work around this it's a it's a professional uh, organization that does certification so I just know that so the board's been very highly involved and very very engaged and then they decided to hire a professional executive director and they want to be able to govern effectively using that executive director. Um, the rest of the board appears to be going along fine with you know, adopting a new system and, and getting there. I have one board member um, who, who sees himself as an expert, as a change management expert, because he worked for a year with one of the large uh, consulting firms. Um, and he keeps putting that out there that he, you know, he understands this and he, he wants to go to a new system of governing, but he has a personal agenda and the personal agenda is very transparent. He does not like the executive director and he wants her out. Mm. He's managed to elicit the support of another person on the board who I don't think really understands what this fellow's agenda is, but he also, but he's totally against moving from an all volunteer organization to one with professional paid staff. And he keeps bringing that up. So I've got two small and they're, and they're small, but they're very loud. They're very vocal. They engage a lot in email. They, and, and so a lot of stuff is happening with, with email and behind the scenes and, and with small factions and, I know that this one, the one guy that I mentioned, the first one, is on the phone all the time with people trying to enlist and engage them in, in, in what he wants to do. And he's very reasonable. 
and and he speaks very well. And um, I think I think it's time for the chair to rein this in. But um, I'd like to know what you all think. Hmm. Well, when uh, I will see what comes in on the uh, on the chat. I, I, I just for uh, you know, kind of clarifying this inside the topic that we're talking about. I mean, I'm hearing there's a, a, a the way an individual is 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 acting. Basically, somebody's somebody's action on the board is actually creating this situation. Would you also say that it's process related? Um. Yes, to some degree. Um. He's uh, bought into the process and bought into to what's being done, but still continues to front his his agenda. Mm -hmm. um, it, and, and take it it's it's taking it off track. Um, I had a a little bit of a dialogue with him myself, and he promised me he wouldn't do that anymore, and then he did it again. <laughs> so, so I you know it was just it, it it's. Uh, what he wants is to postpone the you know the governance piece, uh, transforming the the system of governance that the board is using, and just focus on, um, as he terms it, finding out what we really need for the organization, and and that's his euphemism for once we identify what we really need, it's not going to be the person we have, and we'll boot her. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. what would what you would say you the process is? Um, well, I, tell me what currently. Well, well, currently, uh, the board is engaged in learning and understanding the new system of governance. Um, they haven't yet decided to to make the transition, but they are engaged, very engaged with wanting to learn it. They they did all agree that they wanted to go this way. And they set a small committee on task to identify someone, a consultant, me, to help them, you know, learn what they need to do to get get some of the pieces in place. Um, they, they've, if you will, they've built the watch. They haven't yet wound it yet to, to let it get started. So, so they're 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 they understand the pieces. They've they've got they're they're in in the place where they're ready to make. Uh, a change and and empower the executive director to do the job operationally, um, and and for them to take a different role, uh, but but they haven't yet set any of that in, in motion. So what, so I'm, what hearing I'm hearing is, is I'm also hearing my background. background. Is that is just, just me hearing myself, or do you hear my background? Just a little bit of clicking, but other than that, nothing really. All right. Well, we've we've got some comments from the chat field. Let's see. So, what board rules exist that cover this situation? Has the disruption been measured in any way? And what was the board's original decision? Does it need to be restated? What is what does it matter regarding the ED at this stage? And John's hearing a lot of echo from me. I'm going to see whether I can do this differently. Is this any different? I should probably can. Oh, okay. Thank you. I'll, I'll leave my headset out. And so great. Thank you. Just to deal with it. <laughs> difficult technical situations in our current programming. Uh, so those were questions from uh, John. Let me let me just put all of it on the table, including uh, what we're hearing from Robert also in the chat field. Several issues. One, 30 people is more like a membership and not a board. Two, bring all the backroom conversations into the open, have a facilitated process to make a decision, and then move on. Three, do that now and get on to the new kind of governance next. So anything about any of those um, offerings or questions that John offered, what do you see about that? Uh, the board doesn't have any rules. <laughs> Not right now. That's why they want to put them in place in, in the form of policy. Um, it has a disruption, but yet it, it measured in terms of how much it is a disruption or measured in terms of uh, metered. Um, I'm not 
I'm not sure I understand that. It, it, it's been noted by many people that it is a, that it is a problem. Um, the unfortunate part is that it, it's kind of like whack-a-mole, you know, that game where the, the thing keeps popping up in different places. You, you take it, care of it over here and then it pops up somewhere else. And um, the person is extremely good at manipulating that because he knows if he can pe keep people divided and looking at different things that it'll never get, he'll never get shut down. So um, the board's original decision was to move in this direction um, as I understand it. I don't know that it was formally uh, a decision, but I do believe it was a decision that they made at some point. Um, does it need to be restated possibly what does it matter regarding the ED at this stage? Well, it doesn't, but he's making it the issue. But he's couching it in the terms of, well, we need to understand what our organization needs. We need to understand what it needs to be successful. That's a euphemism for the ED is a problem. We need to get rid of her. Um, and bring all the backroom conversations into the open. Yeah, that's, that's something that needs to happen. Um, we are going to have a facilitated process. That's what all this is leading up to. Um, and yeah, that's what we're trying to do uh, via a virtual meeting instead of uh, being trying to do it all at the face to face meeting. So did I address everything? <laughs> but yeah, there's there's a lot going on. There are a lot of moving parts here. Is there is there someone um, in the room? I don't know that it necessarily would be you as the consultant coming in on a particular topic, but is there someone in the room with authority to like stop the action and interrupt the process that's current or interrupt whatever's currently happening as quote process and I think only the chair at this point. Um, really that's the only person who could possibly do it. Because clearly it sounds like something needs to get interrupted. Yes, I think so too. I think you're right. Um, the person to do that. She's, uh, I think there's been some reluctance on her part to do so um, because she believes that she has a relationship with this guy that she doesn't want to um, impinge on and as long as it's kind of like keep your enemies close you know kind of thing and if she can keep him close and know what he's thinking then she can deal with it better um so she's been reluctant to um to draw him out and, and tell, tell him how much by the way good point robert how much this is a disruption and a and a real drain on the board's time mm. And maybe that's not, uh, people aren't aware of that separate, um, I, I think about sometimes keeping it not personal. Mm -hmm. You know, it just, okay, this, it's not like he may not have a valid point or a valid discussion that needs to take place. Is this the time to do it? How are we do? Where, how are we handling our board time? So it's not personal against someone, but what we're here for and how do are we agreeing to use our time? Yeah. I like that. That's a good approach. And as John is pointing out, you know, chairs should assert. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, you know, and then what do you see your role in that? Oh, I have to talk with her. That's, that's, that's my next move is talking with her and, um, seeing if she's now at a place where she's ready to have that conversation with him about that this is not the time to, to be to my my issue for the organization looking at it from a consultant's point of view is this is not a good time to start disrupting who is the executive director because it's a very it's a membership organization um the ED is a very high touch person who's in touch with a lot of people in the membership. Um, and, and she's the primary contact for everybody in the memberships and they know her uh, to, to move that right now 
would be a disruption to the organization. It would cause a lot of questions. It would cause a lot more problems for the board to deal with. And, and they would get completely off track from where they are in terms of you know changing their system of governance that there's been, by and large, a lot of support for, for doing. So this continual um, issue of derailing it and saying, well, we need, to, we need to fix our organizational structure first. The only thing that's there is the executive director. <laughs> There's just one full-time employee. And um, that's so it's not even that, that vague or opaque, it's pretty transparent what, what's meant by that. Hmm. John raises an excellent question. Was the executive director's appointment properly executed to begin with? Um, don't know, it wasn't there. Mm -hmm. um, all I can say is that uh, she worked for the board <clears throat> as an event <coughs> planner and coordinator. And at some point <clears throat> about three years ago, they decided that they wanted to move her into a more formal role as the executive director and they prepared a job description and formally brought her on as the executive director about three years ago. Mm -hmm. And since that time, they've realized that um, they've not given her the authority that she needs to do the job properly. And, and because they're a large board and only meet twice a year, that's a problem. So uh, they want to make sure that she has all she needs <clears throat> to be effective. Uh, and I, I think maybe the fear this guy has is she'll thrive. She'll do really well with that. Mm. Maybe that's the niggling fear, is that under this new system, she will do quite well. Mm. Yeah, it's interesting about the, you know, what happens when people don't actually really know what her capabilities would be. I, I think Robert raises a, you know, it's a great comment that the time to fix the roof is not when it's raining. Right. 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 Um, and uh, uh, John raises that a board of 30, 30 never wants to surrender authority. I do love, uh, you know, something that Robert had said earlier about, you know, what does it take to actually bring all the background conversations into the forefront and have it all laid out on the table? This is what's going on here. This is how you're using your time. And not, but not necessarily that there's anything, quote, wrong with that. But if people begin to get the impact of what's happening, because right now nobody around the room is actually saying how it's going. Right. And do they want to say how it's going? <laughs> I yeah, you, one would hope so. Um, you know, there there are uh, several people. Well, one person did speak up and said, "Look, you know, here's where we are. Um, this is it's difficult. It's different. It's kind of daunting to, to, to change and move to a new kind of system of governing, but, and, and this is coming from a board uh, leader. Um, she's a vice president who has um, had some reservations early on and was not, he had a lot invested in the old way. Like John said, you know, 30 people don't want to give up their authority. And she had a lot invested in that. And, she said it, but in, in the process of learning, and we've been doing this in small groups, um, she said, in the process of learning and understanding what this will do for us, I now understand that this is, this is the best way for us to go because it's going to give us the ability to be very clear about what the ED should be doing and what we should be doing as a board and get rid of some of the conflicts that we've been having. And, and he took this other fellow, just took her on, and said, yeah, but yeah, but yeah, but yeah, but we need to look, I'm all for doing all of this, but we need to make sure our organizational set up to be successful before we do anything. John raises the um, um, a question and then a comment. Could Mr. X be invited to present his recommendations in a paper to the board? This respects his position and enables whole board debate. No, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. 
And it would seem that they need some kind of preliminary rules that they're going to be willing to abide by just to begin with, with just even to have any discussions. Yeah, they don't. That's, that's why this would be a system with some rules about how they're going to uh, work with each other would be, is really ne needed here. I mean, it's, it's the, the organization's kind of, I don't, I'm not invested in whether they do it or not. It, it's, I was just brought on to help them figure out how to get there. Um, but you know, it seems to me after working with them as long as I have that they're kind of at a place where this is this is the next logical step if they truly want to uh, have an opportunity to best leverage paid professional staff as well as best leverage those folks on the board who have something to contribute. Mm -hmm. So um, it, it seems like, and, and we've talked about the size of the board and it it's an artifact they know that it it's probably not going to be sustainable at that size, but feeling like it was more important to tackle the issue of getting some rules in place before tackling some of these other things. So, yeah, I mean, John's referencing that even even to have those rules in place, there needs to be some simple set of small set of ground rules might help to begin mm -hmm. with, just even to have that discussion. Um, Robert liking that, uh, but the bait must lead to a decision, even if it's a decision to do nothing, which John then agrees to, right? So, but they're the ones that are agreeing to what they're doing. Otherwise, you know, can you possibly hold anybody to abide by anything? Yeah, I think, I think the whole issue here is more, less about the board as a whole and more about one individual kind of holding everybody hostage. Hmm. You know, it's, it's, and, it, and I don't know why he seems to have so much personal connection to, to this and, and has so much time, <laughs> so much time to, to engage individuals on the board in this discussion and dialogue. And, and, and it's easy to say, oh, yeah, well, sure, I agree. I see what you're saying without really understanding what, what's underpinning that is, no, what I'm really saying is I want I want the ED out. I want her out. It's a position for sure. Um, I, I do want to correct something that I had said in terms of Robert's agreement. It was with regards to the idea of that Mr. X writing a paper to presented to the board, so it's honored in that way. Mm -hmm. um, but Robert also comments, um, I found that reducing the size of a board does not mean that those non-members go away. All who are interested show up on the board in future years. Mm -hmm. Comment. And we are 25 minutes into this discussion so far. Um, but I do. Anything you see you're taking away from this, Sherry? And then we'll... Um, yeah, I have some, I have some great uh, tactics to offer the chair as a way to... Um, talk with this fellow and invite him to be more formal in presenting his position to the board so that it's something that can be openly discussed as opposed to it being in all the back channels. So I like that idea and that, that would probably resonate with her. So it's been very useful. Thank you so much for your advice and wisdom, folks. Hmm. Fabulous. Thank you to those in the chat field. Sherry Jennings, thank you for joining us, bringing a, a very relevant situation to the table, real in what you're dealing with, and I'm sure uh, familiar to many people in the audience in various versions of that. So thank you to you. This completes our, our Fire Talk discussion for this is Monday, April 24th. Uh, look to this channel for future Fire Talk discussions. And have a great day. Bye. Linda, thanks so much.